I've got this one from just before when ties became narrower. I forgot to show this. This is your psychedelic tie galore. Okay? This is actually a vintage tie, probably around 1949, 50, 51, and it is vintage, and yet it's something that you would expect to see during the time, again, the late 60s. Okay? It's incredible. And I wore this once, and I got compliments, so what can I say? Now, continue with ties that got narrower. You've got a boy's tie, and it's got a hockey thing. This was popular at that time to have ties for boys, which of course were not as long as men's ties, and they would have sports themes. So this shows your hockey scene. And again, this is about 1953-54, around that time. Probably of a rayon, I'm not sure if it says, no, acetate, okay, I'm wrong, it's acetate. You've got here, interestingly enough, a tie which is thinner than what we've seen before previously. This might be about 53, maybe 54, but it's got an Art Deco look to it. And I forgot to mention that during the late 40s, early 50s, Art Deco was resurrected for the bold look ties very often. This is not from that time period. This is from a later date, and yet it still has a, sort of an Art Deco look to it. This was, I believe, my first 50s tie ever, believe it or not. Okay. Then you've got what became very popular in the 50s, the square bottom tie. This has, I think, a great design. It's by uh, Trim Shape. Well, it's Trim Shape by Cavalier of Louisville, Kentucky. It feels like acetate, and it's got a nice, almost subdued design. But that was typical also of the 50s, designs that were more subdued, not so loud, a more conservative time. But again, dealing with the square bottoms, you've also got what was popular for a while, and that was the pleated tie. And these both are from Legath, which was in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And these are pleated, uh, black and pink, very nice design, nothing flamboyant, but it does a trick. And you've also got this one, basically burgundy, with a little bit of uh, light infantry blue and white. And again, by uh, Legaff. And many people think that the little device that says, slip not through here, or I should say, slip the blade through here, mm -hmm. came about all in the 60s. Not true. This tie is 50s, and it has this right here. And it says, put small end through here. So quite clearly, this invention came about before the, the late 60s. Right. You got one for us, sir? There's another very conservative 50s tie. Oh, very nice. I like it. Very, very nice. nice. Very nice. And um, this was sold at Buffums. I think Buffums went out of business. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it oh, went a while back. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, where Dorothy came from. There you um, go. Buffums, yeah. See, the, the other thing about the muted ties, if you watch any of the movies, North by Northwest, or right. any Hitchcock films, that year was just about blending the uh, suit with the tie. You see him wearing a silver tie with this gray suit. Exactly. You see him wearing a brown tie with a burgundy, uh, burgundy right. tie with a brown suit. Right. It was never being brash, whereas the 40s or earlier were the ties. Exactly. Out. Good contrast. And, yeah. and, and again, this this would this this has very very little yeah. material. It's not a thick modern tie. This is a Right, like Windsor on this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like this almost. Now, now Matt Decker was talking about the fact that in the 50s it was more, as far as matching, more conservative. And yet, this one here is pretty much on the cusp. This is an early 50s tie. It could even be, you know, 53, something like that. And yet you still see the hand-painted type of design. So they, they did exist, but not, not in the same proliferation. And this is by Magic Gold. From Wilson Brothers. I love this tie. Oh, it's really Brothers. nice. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. One of your better brothers. Oh, there you go. Exactly. Okay, you got some else for us? This is a. It's an nice. unknown, but. Unknown. Very nice. 50s. 50s tie. Feels like acetate. It's a nice, more conservative design. In the 50s, you see this quite often as far as the V's kind of interconnecting. Yeah, right in the middle. Very, exactly, yeah. Very geometric. Exactly, very geometric. No doubt. Very nice tie. So again, in the 50s, you see the ties becoming a bit thinner. Here is a Holly Vogue tie. We saw an earlier Holly Vogue, uh, which was about four inches at least. This is a transition one. This is probably about 1953, maybe 54. As you can see, it is thinner than the bold look ties. This is uh, all silk and has a price tag of 350. Oh. Now, 350 and 50. 
four fifty five was that's a good price. I mean, because um, the average tie at that time probably cost about two dollars. So for three fifty, you're getting something that oh, well, that's good quality, quality, very nice. I love this design. I still have the thrift store uh, tag on it for one ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Saint Vincent de Paul. So anyway, yeah. So ties started getting thinner. Still a bargain. It's still a bargain. You have here. I brought this because not only is it uh, a transition tie from the mid fifties, but I have this tie in three different colors. I have this. I have blue and also silver. I could have purchased the brown, but I have too much brown already. But the point is, many ties were made in the same pattern, but in different colors. You're wearing a gray suit, well, I might wear this. You're wearing a blue suit, well, give me maybe a, a gray or a blue. So I've got three of these in the same color. Gentlemen, can you to take a break so I can put on my new right dress? Right on, very good. Can you, so 